Jordan's going, to, Jordan's going to introduce them. Father, we thank you for the tithe and the giving in this house. We thank you, Lord, that it prospers to do your kingdom work, Lord, in this community and around the world. Thank you for every giver. God, and we know your hand is on it to increase it. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you ready for the word of God today? I sounded weak. I said, you're ready for the word of God from this mighty man of God who I'm talking about. Pastor Jordan wants to introduce him. Good morning, Hope Church. This speaker that's coming to you today to preach the message uh, is a good friend. We've gotten to know each other over the years. Uh, he is here located in Warner Robins, Georgia, uh, building a great ministry. Uh, he's an author, a coach. Uh, this man can do it all. Uh, he's such a, a fun person to be around. I've enjoyed the time I've gotten to spend with him. And I am so uh, honored and excited uh, to have him here at Hope Church today. Would you please get on your feet and please welcome from the Freedom Church here in Warner Robins, please welcome Pastor Troy Wynn. Come on, make some noise if you love the Lord. Come on, I think we can do better. Make some noise if you really love the Lord today. God is good. And all the time. And if you didn't know, you better ask somebody. Amen. Do me a favor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you ready for what's about to go down? <laughs> I heard somebody say it goes down in the DM. I don't know nothing about that. I do know it goes down when God's people come together and get their hearts and minds on one accord. I know it goes down then. You may be seated. This is the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. I just want 40 minutes of your time. Say with me, it won't work. That's the name of the sermon. Say, it, it won't, won't work. work. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. It, won't it won't work. Let's go to work. Romans, the 8th chapter, the 18th verse, if you will, should be on the screen. I'd like for us to read it together. One, two, ready, read. For I consider from the standpoint of faith that the sufferings of the present life are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us. If you will stand, Father, we thank you for this word and this moment in time. We now diminish ourselves so that you might be seen, felt, heard, and experienced. I bind every devil that was ignorant enough to come into this place today. If you're here, devil, you're going to get this work today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. amen. and amen. You just read Romans 8 and 18, and I want to tell you that this is from the famous Apostle Paul. And when the Apostle Paul pens this particular pericope of Scripture, Paul speaks on a topic that we all can relate to called suffering. And I just need to pause parenthetically and find my people in the room. Do I have anybody that knows anything about suffering? If you know something about suffering, let me hear you make some noise. Oh, my folks are in here. Here's what I want to do. I want to change the way that you view your suffering because in my opinion, suffering is the secret ingredient to supernatural success. Now, how many of you want supernatural success? Yes, and if you don't, then God bless your heart. If you want supernatural success, I need you to say this. Say, suffering, suffering. is the secret ingredient to supernatural success. Somebody say, why, Pastor? Here's why, because a weed that grew in the gutter knows more about survival than a flower that was nurtured in the meadow. And listen, I know that some of you might have been born with a silver spoon in your mouth and I don't really have much for you today. But I want to speak to anybody who's been struggling all your life. All your life you've had to fight. All your life you've had to deal with adversity. All your life you've had to deal with people not liking you and they didn't even know you. You were born behind the eight ball and seems like life has not been fair to you. Seems like you've been dealt a losing hand. I got a word for you today because I want you to know that it ah, won't work. 
Can I go deeper? Do me a favor real quick. Raise your hand if you've ever heard these words, new levels, new devils. Okay, I just told Bishop, one of my assignments is to correct incorrect theology. And I want to say this, just bear with me because I know sometimes we get things in our spirit and we don't want anybody to mess with them. But I promise you, if you'll let me modify this, it'll bless you. This statement is not 100% accurate, Bishop. New levels, new devils. It sounds good, but it's not 100% accurate. What do you mean, Pastor? Here's what I mean. You don't only get new devils when you get on new levels. You don't only get new devils when you get on new levels. What are you telling me, Pastor? Oftentimes, before you get on a new level, teach PT, you'll get new devils who you have to defeat so you can get on the next level. So if we limit the construct to just new devil, new level, then we'll miss the devil that shows up to keep us from getting to our next level. You say, Pastor, you got any word for that? Oh, I got plenty of word for that. Somebody say David. David. Anybody like David in the Bible? Man, David is my dude because David reminds me of me. Jacked up from the rooter to the tutor, but God still used him. Amen, somebody? David is my dude because he was not perfect, but God said, He's a man after my own heart. Let's peep my construct today as I tell you that sometimes the devil shows up before the new level is available and you have to defeat the devil to get on the new level. Can I, can, can I, can I push the envelope just a little bit? Somebody say David. David. Say current level. Current Shepherd. Shepherd. Now peep this. David defeats a lion. David defeats a bear. Give me a drum roll. And because he defeated the lion and the bear, guess what? He got a new level. Now, somebody going to laugh, but I, I found my Bible to be very accurate. What's the new level, Pastor? After David defeated the lion and the bear, David gets a job with DoorDash. <laughs> Anybody read your Bible, you know where I'm going. Pastor, ain't nobody, ain't nobody talk about no DoorDash in the Bible. Go to 1 Samuel 17 to 17, and I'm going to show you DoorDash was in the Bible. 1 Samuel 17 to 17 says this. One day, Jesse said to David, take 10 kilograms, equivalent to approximately 2.2 pounds of this roasted grain. Take these 10 loaves of bread and hurry with them to your brothers in the camp. And while you're at it, take these 10 Jesus to the commanding officer. If that ain't DoorDash, I don't know what is. He got a promotion because he defeated the devil first. And when he defeated the devil, God said, here's your new level. The new level is that of a servant. See, I need you to know something. The opposition, the bear and the lion, came before the new level was presented to David. And what you got to understand is sometimes you miss your blessing because you disrespect small beginnings. Everybody wants to be a king, but don't nobody want to serve the king. Everybody want to lead, but don't nobody want to follow nobody. And before David makes it to the kingdom, he has to prove himself in the low places, in the stinking places. So he goes from being a shepherd to being a door dash delivery person. And he delivers the product on the battlefield and guess what while he's being faithful in his most recent level he's presented with another devil what are you talking about pastor the bible says david hits the scene with a gangster lean and finds this cat named goliath talking crazy trash now peep this david's not there to fight giants David's there to deliver cheese and bread, and you know it was hot, so by the time he got where he was at, he delivered the first pizza. I wish I had a church. I wish I had a church. He started out with bread and cheese, but while he got there, he said, pizza for my brothers. Peep this. Always be ready to do more than you were asked to do if you want to experience supernatural success in your life. Ain't nobody told David to fight Goliath. But David is always willing to be used for the glory of the Lord. And guess what happens? David defeats Goliath. <laughs> this is so good. And after he defeated Goliath, guess what? A new level came. What you mean a new level came? Oh, man, he got the king's daughter. 
his family's debt was destroyed, and he went to a, another level. And I need you to look at your neighbor, square, eyeball to eyeball. And they don't want to talk to you, talk to the side of their face and breathe your hot breath on them. <laughs> Say, neighbor, yeah. sometimes, sometimes a new devil, a new devil. Is, your is your gateway to a new level. When you face, fight, and defeat the things trying to face, fight, and defeat you. Give God praise and say it won't work. I dare you to high five one person and say it won't work. Which is why Pastor Tish, what Paul says is so profound in Romans 8 and 18. Because Paul says, for I consider from this standpoint of faith. Make sure when you look at your problems, you're looking at them from the standpoint of faith. Because something looks different when I look from the standpoint of faith. Paul knows all about suffering. He says, the sufferings, please don't miss the S on suffering. I don't know where we got this new breed of Christians who thought they was going to go through one test and get it all. The Bible says we have to go through long sufferings. Paul says the sufferings of this present life are not worthy to be compared. Ah, I feel good now. To the what? The glory. Peep this, peep this. Somebody hold my mute now. To what? That is about. Ah. Stay calm, PT. You got a little ways to go. That is about to be revealed. Peep the two side coin. To us. Ah. Okay, stay cool. And in us. I don't know how you sat there. You should have moved your wig three degrees to the left when I just read what I just read. But I'm going to give you one more chance. Paul says that our sufferings in this present life, whatever you're going through, Paul says, you cannot compare it to the glory that is about to. I just need one person to say about to. I don't know if you know, but something is about to happen in your life. It ain't happened yet. You can't see it. But can you smell what the Lord is cooking? Something about to happen up in here. <laughs> Sit down. I know y'all trying to rush me. It won't work. Sit down. <laughs> if we clap you, hurry up. No. <laughs> Somebody say, look at, look at me now. Look at your neighbor. Say, look at me. Look at Tell them, take a picture. <laughs> because in a few months... You're going to need another picture. Because what you see now ain't going ain't gonna to be what you're going to see later. Oh, you can hate me now. <laughs> but what you're going to see later going to be greater. And this is for all your haters who hate you and you ain't got nothing. They hate you and you ain't done nothing. They hate you and you ain't got your blessing. Boy, they're going to be sick when God do what he's about to do. Tell somebody it's about to happen. Sit on down. Sit on down. I got to go. I just need you to shout on the count of three, it won't work. One, two, three. It won't work. And the Bible says, <laughs> Satan loves to attack our faith when we've been knocked down. Now I'm about to teach, somebody gonna thank me for this one. Demons monitor our demeanor. Let me try this side. I said demons monitor our demeanor. Which is why all of you folks who are trusting God for something, you're going to have to get your emotions in order. You're going to have to stop living in your feelings because the devil is looking for somebody whose demeanor says, I'm not sure God's going to do what he told me he was going to do. Say it with me. Say demons. Monitor. Our demeanor. Why? Because demons are attracted to the sadness. Demons are attracted to depression. Demons are attracted to hopelessness. By the time I was 23 years old, I had tried to commit suicide three times. I was saved, but I was living in an utter state of depression. Don't you let nobody tell you just because you saved, you ain't got to worry about depression. Honey, you got to fight that devil because he comes for the saints just like he comes for the sinners. Can I get five witnesses to say, Pastor, show you right. 
Somebody lied and said every day was going to be sunny. Somebody lied and said once you give your life to Jesus, everything going to be all right. Use a lie. I'm sorry. You are a liar. I've had some dog days in my life. Times when I couldn't feed my own children. Times when I couldn't pay my own rent. Times when I got foreclosed and got put out and had to move in with my in-laws. Me and my wife and my children. Times where I had to go to the pawn shop every Friday to pawn something just so I could have a little gas money on the weekend. Do I know anybody know anything about a struggle? I know you're doing good right now, but let's stroll down memory lane and let's remember how far God has brought us. You might not be where you want to be, but I bet you ain't where you used to be. Which is why when you're going through, you got to be careful when you suffer loss. You got to be careful when you experience setbacks. You got to be careful when you're down, sad, and depressed because the enemy is looking. The Bible says he goes to and fro ah, like a roaring lion. He this seeking whom he may devour. I don't know if you understand the power of that scripture. The word may is a word of permission, which means the devil can't devour you unless you let it. Seeking who he may devour. So when he comes to you, he's literally asking you, may I devour you? Excuse me, Bishop, but the answer is hell to the no. Y'all can edit that out if y'all would like to. Did he just say hell to the gnaw? And did, amen? So I don't play with the devil because he don't play with me. And I'm speaking life to everybody that's down right now. It won't be this way always, I promise you. Things get better if you stay in the race. Things get better if you keep fighting a good fight of faith. Things get better if you hold on to God's unchanging hand. I'm a living witness that things get better. why you got to watch the devil because he comes in to try to wrap you in defeat he tries to come in to get you to stop praying huh? no you ain't gonna say amen but i know about it. he tried to get you to stop believing that god's gonna do what he said he was gonna do he tried to get you to stop coming to church faithfully this is why the word of god matters where's my sword at the word of god matters Somebody say, the word of God matters. I love the Bible because the Bible talks about the power of the word. And some of y'all need to recognize your only issue is you don't know enough word. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't know enough word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's getting quiet in here now. How is it that you know all the lyrics? Oh, I'm finna lose them now, Lord. To Cardi B song but you don't know three scriptures to save your whole life. Amen, somebody? When the devil is busting you upside your head, quote Cardi B, I promise you, the devil ain't gonna leave you. When the devil came for Jesus, Jesus hit him with the word of God. Not once, not twice, but three times, which means you got to have some backup word. If Jesus had to use the word, you got to use the word. But you can't use what you don't know. Tell your neighbor the word of God matters. Say, hey, Pastor, you got any word for that? Psalms 119 and 11. I got to go. How much time I got? I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Your word have I hidden. Oh, I got a church in here. I say your word have I hidden in my heart. Somebody must have said, why are you going to do that? That I might not sin against thee. Which means that anybody that ain't hiding the word in your heart, you ain't trying not to sin. Amen, somebody? 
You ain't gonna clap, amen, because I know the word tell you, if it feel good, do it. I'm here to tell you, you get some word in you, you might want to do it, but something inside of tell you, no, nah, we ain't gonna do that this time. Come on, you might not do it, come on, ah, oh, you don't want to clap, but I'm telling you, the word of God will give you the desire to want to obey God. The word of God will make you want to do right when your flesh want to do wrong. Do I have anybody got word in you that keeps you from not cussing folks out? You know somebody was supposed to get cussed out last week. They deserved it. They, they earned it. But because you had just enough word, here's what you told them. You better be glad I'm saved. Amen, somebody? Translation, you like that got cussed out. In Jesus' name. I like John 1. It says, in the beginning, y'all read it with me. In the beginning was the word we're supposed to be reading together. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word. I got happy. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Bishop, can I test theology for a second? The Word is not just scriptures. Uh oh. I'll say it again because you need to get it. The word is not just scriptures. The pastor, if word is not just scriptures, what is it? I'm so glad you asked. The word is Jesus Christ. Oh, you ain't going to clap, but that's okay. I'm good without the clap. And there's a lot of folk got the word, but ain't got no Jesus. Amen, somebody? You know scripture, but you ain't got the spirit of the living God in you to activate the scripture because scripture has no power without Jesus. The devil knows scripture. You know some folk know a whole bunch of scripture but don't live a nickel worth of dog meat. That's because they ain't got no Jesus with their scripture. And the Bible says that the word was there in the beginning. You need to roll with whatever was in the beginning. Everybody looking for something new. Everybody looking for something we ain't never seen before and heard before. Honey, I'm telling you, it's time for us to go back to the old landmark. It's time for us to go back to the old faithful tenements of church. It's time for us to go to the, y'all don't want to clap. Listen, ain't nothing wrong with new, but ain't nothing going to beat the hymns. Ain't nothing going to beat worship, amen. And I love to get down with the get down like everybody else. I love the bass and the boom and the bop and the tick. I love the lights and the smoke, but ain't nothing going to beat worship, baby. Worship changes the atmosphere. Everybody can praise. Clap your hands, stomp your feet, do a little day. Everybody can praise. But how you find out real quick who got Jesus when worship hit? You saw it today. Praise everybody participated. When they shifted into worship, some folk tapped out. I'll wait till the beat come back in. And that's why you keep getting beat. <laughs> you keep getting beat because you got to have a beat to get in touch with God. But I know some folk who know how to praise God in their car. I, I know some folk pull up to the red light, tears running down their face, looking crazy. Come on. See, y'all want to come in here and give God a bougie praise. Sometimes God looking for an ugly worship. Who am I talking to today? So you're talking to me, Pastor. Somebody say he's talking good. This is why Jesus matters. And I know they told you there are many ways to God. And I know I'm going to lose some folks. I don't mean to make my Muslim brothers mad. I'm going to teach them, sister. I don't mean to make my Catholic sisters angry. But no man comes to the Father except through Christ. So we don't pray to Mary. I said, like a lakum. So lakum salam. Y'all ain't gonna like me in here, are you? Jesus is the only way. 
and all y'all they got a substitute, you're going to bust hell wide open if you don't get Jesus and Jesus alone. All I need is Jesus. Go ahead. Keep on praying to Mary. Keep on telling the priest about your sins when the priest need to tell somebody about his sins. Leave them boys alone. What I look like telling you about my sin and you sleep with little boys. I can't tell you nothing but get Jesus. Oh, y'all don't like that kind of... It's cool. It's cool. I'm just here for a day. <laughs> and I go back where I came from. It's cool. But while I'm here, I'm going to preach the gospel. While I'm here, I'm going to say what God tell me to say. While I'm here, we're going to get somebody set free of it here. Because I heard that's what y'all do over here at Hope Church. Now you know that's some spiritual chemistry. When you mix some hope with some freedom, baby, get ready. Because something about to blow up in here. <laughs> Sit on down, I got to go. I hear the musician. That must be my time running out. <laughs> we together. I appreciate you. Keep me on track. Somebody say you got 16 minutes. Yeah, you said take your time. Somebody said hurry up. Amen, somebody. Like, is he still up there? Can I go just a little deeper? Now, now I'm about to go like really deep, so if I get too deep, just tap out. And, and we'll meet up on the end. Some of you got Jesus on you and not Jesus in you. See, I almost skipped that and God said, you better not skip it. There's a difference between having Jesus in you and having Jesus on you. Somebody said, Pastor, what's the difference? If he's on you, you're churchy, but you're not changed. You sitting by somebody mean mugging me right now and point him out. Appreciate you. Thank you. You can be churchy and not change. You should not be saved and cynical. Hmm. You should not be the one person in church that's so mean that people walk all the way around not to have to cross paths with you. When you have Jesus on you, you do more whining than you do winning. But if he's in you, I need to tell somebody, you gonna win no matter what. You didn't hear me? I declare if Jesus is in you, you gonna win no matter what. All I do is win, win, win no matter what. Jesus on the inside can't get enough. Every time I step into the building, everybody hands go. And they stay there. Y'all ain't ready, amen, somebody? I'm sorry. Up, down, up, down. Tell your neighbor, all I do is win. Tell them I might look like I'm losing. But I'm getting ready to enter my winning season. Give God praise if he got it. I got to go. I got to go. Let me wipe my face. Can I sip some water? Y'all working me, so let me take a little break. This is, this is my 15 second. It ain't a smoke break, because I ain't gonna smoke with a water break. Say neighbor. Are you enjoying this? If they say no, get another seat. I wouldn't even sit by them for the rest of the sermon. Somebody say, we always win. Say it with your chest, say we always win. When Jesus, when Jesus is hidden within, is hidden within. say, Pastor, Pastor, how you know? I'm so glad you know. I know because demons love to try to limit our faith. <laughs> Especially when we're going through different trials and challenges. When we're going through different seasons of suffering, the devil loves to try to come in and limit our faith. He loves to try to come in and, and limit our peace. Mm. He loves to try to come in and, and limit our power. This is what the devil does. Every time you're going through something, he goes to and fro seeking whom he may devour. Which is why when you come into the house of the Lord, you cannot afford to leave the way that you came. Honey, you got to come in here and leave some stuff that you don't need to take back home because if you take it back home, it's only going to multiply and get greater next week. 
The devil has the audacity oftentimes to come to church. I heard somebody say the devil don't go to church. You's a liar. The devil in church every single Sunday. Well, I don't know how the devil come to church because the power of God is so powerful. If the, if the devil can go to heaven and talk to God about Job, then he surely can come to Freedom Church and Hope Church. Amen, somebody? Tell your neighbor, he here today. Your job is to make sure you see him. Oftentimes where there's one, there's got to be another one. Because you know them demons, they stick together. I wish the church would stick together like demons stick together. I'll be glad when I can get some of the friendships I had in the world in the church. Before I got saved, me and some of my homies were so tight, we drink out the same bottle and nobody even wiped it off. I ain't got no church in here now. If I didn't have no gas money, they would chip in and say, we got your win. Now church folk talk about you when you ain't got your money right. Oh, they, oh it's, it's quiet now. I see you. Yeah. Look at him. In the church. While I'm preaching... Wow, thumbs up. <laughs> and what most church folks don't know is that oftentimes, Bishop, your pastor, your bishop is ministering to you while he's dealing with his own demons. <laughs> don't let the spotlight fool you, baby. Don't let all the things happen in our life. If the devil's after you, you know he's got to be after your leaders, which is why you got to pray for your leaders. Lift them up because the enemy is coming to try to bind them. Now I want to show you what God showed me in the spirit realm. The demons show up because they want to wrap you up. Teach PT. They want to wrap you up in fear. Huh. Oh, I feel good now. They want to wrap you up in the setback that you experience. They want to wrap you up so much that you feel shame that you lost your house. You feel shame that your child got locked up after you ran around the church seven times and declared that God was going to save them. The devil loves to make you feel shame when you don't have what you're professing to have in God's word and you seem like you're on the struggle bus. I ain't got no real church in here. He tries to wrap you up and make you think that the way it is, is the way it's going to always be. But I stopped by to tell somebody that when the devil comes to wrap you up, you got to have faith in God. See, I got faith in God. Why? Because I got the word of God in me. I got faith in God because I don't just have the word on me. I got the word in me. And because I got the word in me, I can declare no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against me, I will cast out. I can declare that I am the head and not the tail. I can declare that I'm blessed going up and I'm blessed coming out. Even when I'm wrapped up. See, you trying to wait till the battle is over. Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. I'm wrapped up. I'm tied up and I'm tangled up and look like the devil got me. So here's the challenge. Can I still pray like this? Here's the challenge. Can I still worship like this? And I know sometimes you can't go into full worship because you're limited. But honey, you got to do everything you can do. Even when you're in bondage, even when you're in debt, even when your children are acting crazy. You got to give God praise even when you're wrapped up in your situations. You say, Pastor, you said to hide the word. But how you gonna use the word when you wrapped up? 
See, this y'all problem. Y'all see this? This the word that you can see. Yeah, this your I Love Jesus t-shirt. This your Facebook post. This is your loud declaration about how much you love God. But everybody in this room better recognize that you just can't have a word that everybody can see. You got to have a word that's hidden. You got to have a word that's hidden so that when you're bound up, you can reach and get your word. I wish I had a church. I wish I had a church. How did he get past security? I came through the back door. Amen, somebody. <laughs> See, when you are going through, you need more than a Sunday morning word. You need a word in your private prayer closet. You need a word where ain't nobody know you praying. You need to get with God and let God saturate you so that when the enemy wraps you, you use the word on the inside. Make sure you cut it. I wish I had a church in here. Oh, I just heard the Holy Ghost. When the enemy wraps you up the next time, tell him, rip me out the plastic because I'm back in brand new. I wish I had a church in here. You got to be 20 and under to understand that. I dare somebody say, you better rip me out the plastic because I'm about to act brand new. Yeah, I was down and I went through, but I'm about to come out the plastic in a way you ain't never seen. Because the Bible said God's about to reveal in us and through us great things. I dare you to tell you never it won't work. High five somebody say it won't work. Come on, tell them it won't work. That's why I got to go with Isaiah 54 and 17. Come on, praise team. No weapon. I need somebody to get excited. Say, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You don't hear me though. I say, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. He didn't say it wasn't going to be formed. He didn't say they wasn't going to hate you. He didn't say you weren't going to lose your job. He didn't say folks were going to tell lies on you. He said the weapon's going to be formed, but it will not prosper. Which means when the enemy manufactures it, God makes sure it malfunctions. Oh. Do I have anybody that has a testimony where the enemy thought he had you? Where you thought the devil had you? But because of the word of God that you have in your life, because of your faithfulness in God, you can declare that no weapon formed against me can prosper. You may be wrapped up in debt today. Everybody standing. You may be wrapped up in debt today. You may be wrapped up in sickness in your body. God is here to do something for you. And let's just face it. Let's just talk about it. You might even be wrapped up in sin. Don't you let nobody keep you from the feet of your Savior. Your sins may be public, but I believe that everybody in this room has something we need to be working on. Now the self-righteous never clap when I say that because you want everybody to think you got it together. But honey, I got issues in my tissues. Can I get another witness to say, me too, pastor? So if we got stuff that we need to be working on, we don't have time or space to be judging nobody else. You better sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around mine. What's the word, Pastor? The word is, no matter what you're going through, it won't work. I need you to stand up and hold your head up and say, Devil, it won't work. Come on, say it like you're talking to him. It won't work. One more time. It won't work. Say, even when I'm wrapped, I'm still not capped. No cap, baby. No cap. Somebody's wrapped up right now. Somebody's wrapped up in depression. Somebody's wrapped up in wondering how God's going to come through for you. We're going to sing this song, and if you can latch on to faith today, swallow your pride and dismiss your shame. Because today you need to leave the wrapping on the altar. Oh. 
here's the good thing about being in the house of God sometimes we don't have what we need to set ourselves free that's why the Bible says that there is power in unity isn't it good to know that you got a brother or sister who when you're struggling they ain't even got to know what you're going through they pick it up in their spirit and they just lay their hands on your shoulders and say, Lord, oh, I feel him now. He's here. Whatever they're going through, let them know it won't work. When we start singing, I want you to meet me at this altar because we're going to leave some wrappings on the altar. Don't get me. Shall prosper. No, it won't work. Say no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It say it again. No formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. If you know it, sing it. Shall Shall oh, it won't work. God will do. God will do what He said He will. Stand by. He will. walked up here is victory does anybody feel the presence of God like I do or maybe I'm just imagining something here people still coming come on it's not too late come on come on come on come on don't you stand there wrapped up you get up here and walk by faith because no weapon formed against you can prosper because Jesus has already won the victory every head bowed on the altar and those of you in the audience I'm gonna ask you to please stretch your hand if you're a person of faith use your sword to help set somebody else free on the altar say this with me say father I declare today <laughs> it won't work <laughs> Say thank you for the word. When I leave here today, what had me bound won't bind me anymore. Because I'm going to use God's word to maintain the freedom that Jesus obtained. Satan today was the last day you had me bound loose me and let me go because I belong to God I belong to God 
I belong to God. And even when I was wrapped, I still wasn't kept. There is more in me that's about to happen. Because this is my time. And when I count to three, when I count to three, I need you to leave here with a sore throat today. When I count to three, I want you to give God a praise of victory like you ain't never given him before. One, two, three, shout. nobody think I don't care what you're gonna say after the service is over you can talk about me all you want honey when you free you don't care nothing but nobody but I'm free I'm free look at me I'm free take a picture look at me wait 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 some of y'all still standing there. So I know I'm different. But if you'll trust me, if you trust me, God will bless you. Well, Pastor, I can't sing. Ain't nobody cut no album today. Pastor, I don't know the key. We don't care about no key. We trying to get in unity. If the people of God can march around a wall and be in unity and things come down, something can happen if I can get you to say, I'm free. So we're gonna try it one more time. You ready? I'm free. 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 Look at me. I'm free. I'm free. Look at me. I'm free. Here's my favorite part. Take a picture. Take a picture, take a picture, cheese, take a picture, take a picture, cheese, cheese, cause I'm free, I'm free. now give God your best praise cause we are free, and we got hope, who the sun sets free, who the sun sets free, who the sun sets free, is free in Come on! Hey! I'm free! I'm free! Hallelujah! I'm free! I'm free! I'm free! Thank God! Thank God! Thank God! I'm free! One more praise for God, I gotta go! Hallelujah! Come on, freedom, hope. Give Jesus a 
best shout you got. Come on. Yeah, it sounds good. It sounds good. One thought hit me. I'm going to let you go. One thought hit me. I went and saw this movie the other day, The Sound of Freedom. The Sound of Freedom. It's when people, when these kids are getting hijacked, hostage for sex trafficking, and there's a guy that went out and they started this ministry to set these young children free. Y'all ain't hearing me. And, and so today I felt that same analogy, even though it's a serious, serious thing. But today it's the same way the devil had a hold on us. We were crying out for somebody to come and help us. God used Pastor Troy to help us. Y'all right. God used Pastor Troy to help us. So the sound of freedom was, this girl started playing on the drum and started singing and started just singing a great melody. I felt like I was in a group just then. I felt like I was harmonizing, making melody. Come on, somebody. So one more time, if you've been set free, there's a sound of freedom. Now watch, hold on a second. Shouting is not just about shouting. Shouting is not about just about shouting. But what shouting does, it releases out of you. It releases out of you frustration, irritation, bondage, how it used to be, but I'm leaving a brand new person. Is anybody leaving a brand new person up in here? So get good and shut. revelation that causes us to walk in freedom and I got to do this I know we've prayed but but if you've never ever or maybe you're coming back today to say Jesus come into my heart right because the Bible says this whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved I don't take it for granted man somebody might be standing here here watching online you've never given your heart to Jesus you've come to church pastor Troy said that you church you but I want Jesus in here Anybody want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior today? Just throw your hand up. We're going to pray with you. Everybody's going to pray with you. God bless you. Leave it up. Leave it up. Leave it up. Leave it up. Come on. Hope. Freedom. Come on. Leave it up. Just leave it up. Put him in the back, back there. Come on. Leave it up. Come on. That, I'm talking eternal freedom right now. And then free in life. All right. Everybody's going to pray. Leave those hands up. One of our servant leaders of the salvation team is going to put something in your hand. Uh, James in the very back, right there by the camera on the right young lady come on somebody it's awesome jesus said let's make a party up here for people getting saved all right we're all gonna pray with you together everybody out loud say it dear jesus i thank you today that i realize my life without you is incomplete but with you it is complete i am yours you are mine forever thank you jesus for coming to this world dying for my sins but on the third day God the Father raised you from the dead and you live today come live in my heart and I'll thank you for saving me forgiving me healing me and I'll praise you and I'll serve you all the days of my life by your grace and by your mercy somebody give God a shout right now that you believe it If you said yes to Jesus, we want to take you and just give you some information. Watch me now. It's so important, y'all. And Pastor Troy just preached this. To grow with knowledge and information and put it into application. So once you get saved, man, that's, that's, that's the beginning, beginning of a great journey. But you need support. You need encouragement. Come on, somebody. You need help to, go, to stay. Let's grow together. Amen. So we'll help you do that. Amen. So we pray that. I'll, I'll, these two books now, I'm going to let you go. These two books Pastor Troy wrote are in the lobby, and it goes so much with what he said about the 51 truths that will transform your life, because the Word will transform your life, and unleashing the power. No, I just want to tell you, they're normally 15, but they're 10. Okay. They're normally 15, but they're 10 apiece. And y'all, we need information. I've read some through these uh, books a minute ago of Scripture, information, 
application of revelation of who you are. So don't leave without getting these two books. All right. Are you good? I said, are you good? Praise the Lord. Again, we want to say thank you for Freedom Church coming. Hope Church, one more time, give it up for Pastor Troy and Freedom Church. Come on, Hope Church. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As you're, as you're standing, real still, real still, real, real quick. But we got uh, Hope students next Wednesday night. I believe it's next Wednesday, the last summer session before school starts. Don't miss that. And if you are interested in getting into Bible College Hope Seminary, we're having our interest meeting right after this service in our uh, growth track room. So please, if you want to come hear information about growing and your biblical knowledge, understanding Hope Seminary is a great place to do it. We would love to see you right there right after church. All right. You feel good? Yeah. Look at your neighbor's house. Feel good today. In Jesus name, you're dismissed. Have a great afternoon.